Okay, I said I had four categories for this. So I've got constants, uh, reciprocals, squares. My last one is the trickiest one. You've heard of simultaneous equations, right? Simultaneous equations, it's where you've got two or more equations and you know they're meant to operate together in the same universe. Well, in just the same way, you can have simultaneous inequalities. Okay, I've got three things over here. Do I need to put No, I don't. Oops, I need a word here. Okay, here's the first thing. And again, we have seen this in induction proofs appear before. You just weren't that familiar with it. If you've got two inequalities, right? So again, simultaneous inequalities, these exist in the same universe. But there's some common feature between them, right? Then you can string them together in a chain. So if you have these two things together, what they imply is that A is bigger than B is bigger than C. But in turn, what that implies is that A is bigger than C. Yeah? So I can draw a conclusion about these opposite ends here because they relate together by this single quantity in the middle. Okay? So I can string them together. In the same way, everything that I did over here, you see how I can combine you know, this inequality and this constant, this inequality and these constants. Okay? I can combine inequalities with each other, like these guys. right? So first, let's think about addition. I don't want to stay in. No, I don't worry about that yet. OK. So the first thing I want you to note is the inequalities are facing in the same direction. That's important to me. If the inequalities are facing in the same direction, then in just the same way with simultaneous equations, you know how sometimes you solve by substitution, but other times you solve by elimination, by adding or subtracting equations from one another, right? Well, you can add or subtract inequalities from each other too, so long as the inequalities are going the same way, okay? So if these two are true together, what they apply is this. You see how I've added the left-hand sides of both inequalities and the right-hand sides of both inequalities. Now I want you to pause for a moment. I think logically we can see this is true. Uh, the way I've written it here, it's like, oh, I've got two big things, you add them together. And I've got two small things, you add them together. Well, it makes sense that the two big things will be bigger than the two small things. But how would you prove it? How would you prove it? Like, that's the intuition that tells you, yeah, it looks reasonable. But what of what's on the board, because look, you now have all of these tools and properties at your disposal. What could you use to prove this result? What do you think? So, okay, so I can take advantage of some of this. Like, if this is an addition thing, then I would think that my addition properties are going to be useful to me, right? So, okay, here comes my proof. So write this underneath. Here's my proof of this result. Because it's kind of like the first one where it's like, yeah, I think so, but how do I really, really know, right? I'm going to start from the first inequality. A is bigger than B, right? Uh, that means that A take away B is going to be greater than zero. Do you agree with that? Yeah. But in the same way that I can get this from here, right? I also get an inequality about this. Now, this is really useful because whenever you can say things are positive or they're, they're definitely positive or they're definitely negative, you can reason with them together. So now I've got, hey, this number, whatever it is, a take away b, it's positive. And this number, c take away d, is also positive. So these two numbers together, they have to be positive, right? Does that make sense when you combine them? That's what's going on here, yeah? So I could say, therefore, a take away b plus c take away d, that's got to be positive. Do you see how I extended the logic just a teeny bit, right? I consider them both as numbers, both having to be positive, and now it's just some very trivial rearrangement here, right? What have I got here? I've got a plus c take away b plus d, just factorizing out that so I can add the whole thing, and then there is the result. I was trying to prove. See that? Okay, now it's unfortunate. I've just, just run out of space, so I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, I've got one more property to show you, and then I want to tell you about how you can use those properties. So, yeah. Um, for this one, could you also go, um, you add C to both sides. So, you, like, you're taking advantage of the addition property of constants, you just add yep. like, C to both yes, sides, and then C is greater than D, and 
<laughs> yep, yep, you can do that. Um, that takes advantage of this and this together. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. All right, um, now I said we can combine by addition. You can also combine by multiplication. So this is still under simultaneous inequalities. So if what I'm doing is I'm multiplying together, In the same way as when I was looking at constants, you have to sort of worry about whether things are positive or negative. So just to keep things simple, I'm just going to stay in positive land because that's where things are easiest to see. So if I've got those two pairs of inequalities, A and B together, C and D together, but I know everything is positive. So this. Okay, I want you to think. If we were to combine these things by multiplication, and really remember, like I'm actually just thinking about the A and the B. I'm not worrying about this, I just want to have it in the back of my mind. Same thing with here. If you multiply these inequalities together, there's the left-hand side. There's the right-hand side. What would you expect to be the case? The inequality should be preserved, right? It should be preserved. That's kind of like a specialised version of this, right? Because this is also multiplying this just by itself. Yeah, so this is a special version. How would you prove it? Like, we prove this here. Can I give you 20, 30 seconds to look at it yourself before I actually just show you? The logic is not that different. It doesn't take too many lines. It uses only the tools that I just showed you this morning. Have a think. How would you prove that? Yeah. Times both sides by, um, of A is greater than B, um, yep. times both sides by C because C is positive. Okay, so I'm going to go with this, right? Multiply both sides by C because I know things about C. Um, using my chain of inequalities here, C is one of the positive numbers that I'm dealing with. So therefore I can multiply through by it. That's good. Okay, I'm going to file that away. What would I do next? What would I do next? Okay, go with this guy, right? Say, well, I also know that to be true. I'm going to multiply by a different positive number that I know about, namely... Hold on, pause for a second. The, I've, got, I've got an AC here. <laughs> Thank you, okay. I've got an AC here. Tick, that's what I want. On the right hand side, I'm supposed to get BD. B, D, oh, right. there's ah, D, right? So maybe, you said every other letter. Okay. There are only four to choose from. I'm going to multiply both sides by B. Right? By the way, I should say as well, I was a bit, um, I was a bit fast and loose. Whenever you do this, right, you should invoke the reason why you can. So here, it's because C is positive, And here, it's because B is positive. Right? Like you multiplied by something, so the inequality is preserved for a particular reason, namely because you know something. And this came up in induction all the time. It's like sometimes you have to multiply through by, like if you had to prove that something was bigger than some multiple of five or something like that. It's like you had to say, oh yeah, well I'm multiplying by this or that. And it's only because it's positive that I know everything's still fine. And now I've got this. And this, what am I going to do with these? Put them together. Yeah, I'm going to combine them, string them together in a chain, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, AC is bigger than BC is bigger than BD, which means I can get that guy in the middle out of it, as required. 